Hello and welcome to Nocturnal Customs Limited. Um, this is the first in a series of tutorials based around the Wacom Cintiq 24 HD Touch. Um, I use Autodesk Sketchbook, so if you want to follow uh, this tutorial and what I'm doing, it would probably pay for you to go and grab a copy of that, but just do a Google search for it. There is a trial version of it, or a free demo version of it. Um, or I think there's a free version of it, which you can use, which doesn't have quite as many brushes, but will do fine for this exercise. So yeah, so let's get started. Um, Basically, we're going to take a piece of uh, line work that I've created previously, or I've started, and we're going to add some tone to it, some mid tones and that sort of thing, um, and give it a little bit more depth and interest. And we're going to get quite advanced in it later on by taking it into Photoshop and using some skin brushes. So, all right, let's get started. Here is our line work. Um, it's just in black and white. Um, Actually, I'll show you the original first. This is the original artwork. Um, the model is Nikki, and the photographer is Jagged Eye. You can see his work on deviantart.com. Um, I highly recommend you go and have a look. He's got uh, lots of really good photos, and um, they're all free to use as long as you acknowledge the artist like I've just done. So, if we go back to our main here, so you can see I've got them side by side so I can see what I want to do and you can see I've just got my black and white line work and I want to grab the tones from the um, original here and just sort of add these sort of shaded areas and sort of build up a bit of form so it's not just a flat drawing so it's got a bit of substance to it. So let's get started with these sort of mid-tones and then we're going to block things out with the lighter tones and then push and pull until we get a little bit more form. So let's start by selecting the right skip tone. So I'm going to go for something like that. You can just see it here. I'll just maximize my Cintiq for you. I've got so many windows open now it gets a bit of confusing for me. That's better. And Cintiq. There you go. Alright, so you can see a bit better now. Okay, so this is the color select down here. Um, you can bring this up just like any of the other tools from Window. So it'll be there in Color Editor. Okay, and also we're work, working on the layers. So we want to first, initially, we're going to create a new layer. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to make sure it's above what I've started doing here already, which you don't have, is um, I've just blocked out some colors here. Uh, but I'm going to keep them hidden for now because we're just working on these skin tones. So again, looking at the original um, or having them side by side, let me just go back to the right window. <coughs> now that I'm set up, I'm ready to start, but I'm going to select a airbrush tool. Um, oh, it's all in the wrong window again. Here we go, that's better. I'm going to select this airbrush tool and I'm going to make sure so that I can rest my hand on the tablet um, that touches off. Yeah, so it touches off because if it touches on it's going to sort of throw me off a little bit. Alright, so I'm ready to go. So I'm going to grab my pen, take a sip of my coffee. Hope you've all got your coffee. It's going to be about a 15 minute tutorial. Excuse me. Um, just to get us started and to get me um, used to doing these webcasts. Okay, so first I'm going to just start referring to my photograph. Like I need a wider brush than that and I need a bit more flow. It's better. Um, I can even go a bit wider than that I think. Yep, that's better. Alright, so I'm just quickly blocking out the dark areas. Um, even bigger. It's lagging a little bit because it's trying to record at the same time. It's quite RAM intensive what I'm trying to do to the full computer. And again I'm just 
observing as much as possible. I'm not worrying too much about the edges and I'm going to show you quickly why I don't care about the edges um, very soon, but first I'm just working quickly and trying to use the airbrush and the pressure sensitive nature of the tablet pen to create as much form as possible based on what I can see in the photo. Okay, so I think you can kind of see what I'm trying to do. It's starting to lag out a bit here, so I might just wait a second for it to catch up. That's better. Okay. That's not too bad. It's a start in here. Okay. I think I've got enough dark areas blocked out just for now to start with. I'll get a new area in here as well. Okay, so stepping back from it, it's, it's looking kind of blocky. Um, it's kind of flat obviously it's really really basic so we're going to put a base layer underneath um, make sure that my layer editor is open and yeah, so I'm going to create another layer new layer and I'm going to drag it underneath what I've just created and I'm going to choose a lighter tone much lighter tone and a even wider brush and now I'm just going to fill in the blanks, essentially, because what my old art teacher used to say was, you don't want to see the page showing through. That's essentially what I'm trying to do is just make sure there's no white paper left. Yeah, that's really laggy. If it starts to get too laggy like that, it really pays to just do a save just in case. Okay, I'm just, I wish that's what I'm going to do right now. Just going to save. Cool. So I've blocked out the basic, basics and I can sort of see a little bit of the form happening, but uh, it is really, really basic and really rough at the moment. Um, so now I'm going to start to get a little bit more serious about it and sort of zoom in just on the face so I can kind of show you what I'm trying to do. At the moment we're just working with two layers um, I might merge those two layers because they're kind of sameish and they don't really need to be separate anymore I'll show you why in a second. Right. There we go. So, yeah, that's pretty much full in. See, if I drag that up to the top because it's already coloured, yeah. It's going to fill in all the spaces for me. Okay, so I want to merge that top layer in from the bottom layer. Uh, onto the bottom layer, so I use this tool here, you just basically hold your tablet onto the layer and then go merge with below to the bottom one, like that, which is done, so now there are just one layer. And this is why, because I just want to show you very quickly why I don't care about the edges at the moment. I want these nice soft kind of feathered kind of skin tones at the moment, so I don't want any sort of narrow brushes or small brushes so I do this and then I select a hard eraser tool and then I can go into the edges just so, while I've got that layer selected with that softer tone that I've sprayed over with the airbrush and I just delete it it's so good so I don't have to worry about masking or anything like that or 
just selecting some of it because it's so quick with the pen to just sort of delete what you've done where you don't want there to be any overspraying so there I've quickly taken away those sort of scrap bits, I'm, I know there's more of them but we're just dealing with the face right now so I won't worry about any of those features. So I better zoom as well in on my original photograph and fortunately again this photographer is great they are really high resolution photos as you can see so I can zoom in there and I can see quite a bit of detail straight away and what I'm looking at is these high points, these highlights and these dark points so and obviously at the moment everything is still pretty flat so let's get in there now straight away and start having some fun with the dark parts so again I'm going to go back to my airbrush tool but this time I'm going to take the size down again let's have a look yeah, that's good and I'm going to make the color a lot darker but still kind of muted so it's fairly realistic looking so now I should be ready yep, to go over and just again referring to my photo and where I see shadows hitting or dark bits sort of appearing I'm over painting and adding more detail from the photo referring to the photo and drawing what I see rather than what I think I see like this So pretty quickly, I've started to get quite a lot of information in there, and her character is really quickly coming up. Just from finding these dark points, I might even just start working on a base color on the lips as well even though we've already got it on another layer because I might get rid of that layer I might decide that what I'm doing now is going to be better so hold on, I'm just going to have a sip of my coffee for a second step back and have a look I should give her her rouge and her cheeks so I'm just going to select a bit of more of a rougey colour take the airbrush up again quite a large size or oh, maybe not so big and then it's better and then hopefully try and match what I see a little bit in the photo like that and then I'm going to take it down a bit and I'm going because what I want to try and do now is I want to try and get this part here so that's kind of more of a apricotty a dark apricotty rusty kind of almost brown color so again something like that maybe yeah so let's try that yep I think mine's a little bit more yellow than red compared to the other one so let's just change that and we can take the flow down now because we want to start softening things in a little bit more and adding a bit more interesting detail in a second Oops, I've accidentally selected the selection tool. There we go, deselected. Now I'm 
back to what I want. Probably change tones, but I'm enjoying working with that one tone and just softening things up a little bit. Be careful because I'm starting to work without looking at the original photograph quite as much, which is not ever a good thing. Okay, so that's not too bad. So We've started to get a bit of form happening there. It's not perfect, again. But there's something happening there. Why don't we start adding a little bit of her eye tone in there. So it's sort of bluey, grey bluey colour. More blue than that. Yeah. With brown flecks, it's actually brown. She's got brown eyes, but okay. Not what I'm looking at. It's a brownie green. So we're gonna use brown and a grey grey brown. Nope. Yellow. Yeah, okay. And take our brush size down. Not quite that much. Yeah, a lot more than that though. Here we go. And we're going to start putting in your eye colour. Now don't worry if it's not accurate at the moment. Because there's a few tricks that I'm going to do with the eyes that I'm going to show you. Just to make it look really quite realistic. But that's just a start. Okay, so. Now that we've got that, I want to do some highlights on her face. So we're going to go over to a more pink colour and get quite pale. It's almost white. It's got sort of creamy off-white and I'm going to start pushing things forward a bit might as well keep it maybe just a little bit bigger yep okay actually maybe smaller and higher flow yeah that's better so yeah now I'm just sort of bringing things forward again referring back to my original photograph seeing where the highlights are on the model's face and trying to match them as possible as much as possible should I say and I haven't done all of them but it already starts to get a bit more interesting and exciting when you do that because you start to see the actual form come into the, into the artwork things stop being so flat and start to be a little bit more realistic yeah and you can kind of see that's sort of happening now and I've got to be careful about where I'm looking Okay, that's a pretty good start though. Cool. So there you go, I've sort of blocked out the main colours on the face. I haven't quite got the detail on the eyes, so this is what I wanted to sort of try and show you with the eyes. So if we go and zoom in even further and really have a look at what those what's happening with those with your eyes, and the same with the original as well. Yes, thank you, high resolution photos. Okay, so there's lots of actually lots of different colours in there. It isn't just a, a brown tone, there's like a green tone in there, there's the dark um, spilling over to a darker sienna almost or um, colour, 
and then there's the reflection on it. So you want to do all of those things. So there's about four different things you want to add. So and we want to add them fairly small because we're working a bit more detailed now. Make sure that we've got the right tool on. And we'll start by adding that green in. So it's a grey green. Like that. So let's start with that. Now oh, for the eyes, you, you kind of do want them to be broken up because there's actually quite a lot of texture in your eyes. That's not too bad. Um, I'm going to go over that sort of edge area which is darker and greyer, quite a bit darker actually. I'll show you what I mean. Like that. And then I'm going to put in that sort of yellow sienna tone which is quite a dark tone like that, it's quite a red tone and take one oh no, it should be okay um, I'm just going to try and do it basically so that it looks like there's a, quite a bit of texture in there same as on the model okay, so that's pretty cool but I'm also going to take some black in there blacken up these corners these pupils, should I say. And over the top of that, I'm just going to add a quick new layer and drop my tool, change my tool actually to a sharper tool. I'm going to go for a felt tip pen and I'm going to use white. And over the top of it, I'm just going to Off white because it's not going to let me use white. I'm going to put in this reflection and I'm using. I was going to say I was using harder, it doesn't actually do that good. So I'm going to use this airbrush and just see if I can soften it up a little bit. And just sort of. myself a little bit more relief there as well. So I'm using a little bit of artistic license there. Alright, so but if I zoom out, it does start to look quite like she's got shiny eyes like the original. It's not quite as detailed as I'd like to get. But I'm just trying to keep this tutorial to 15 minutes. So there you go, I sort of quickly mapped things out, there's still a lot of things I'm missing, like you can see um, the shadows in her eyes are missing, I need to get in here and start working on the shadows eyes, you can even see veins in her eyes, if I sort of zoom in, you look at the original, let's go look at the original, it's not the enemy zoom in is it, okay no worries, yeah so I kind of want to get in here and on these reds and and these sort of dark areas in the corner of the eye so there's still a lot that I need to do but it's a good start and um, she's looking a lot better and again once you sort of start doing that and you zoom out on your character then they start to look like as polished as, as the kind of work that you want want to do Oops, I just accidentally drew it over my work Good for undo Okay, so that's just a quick little tutorial, just to start a tutorial, just so I can warm up uh, and you can see what we're planning to do. So thanks for watching. Um, please go to my website, nocturnal3d.com and subscribe. I haven't got a coupon up there yet, but I will have a coupon up there soon that you can use to subscribe. And uh, you'll get updates for any more new tutorials that I do, and there's some new ones that will be coming up soon. More on the Wacom tablet, uh, maybe some on ZBrush or anything that um, I can think of. And if there's something specific you want to learn 
as well, then you can email me on visual New Zealand visual NZ at gmail.com and I'll answer any of your questions or find me on tw on Twitter. And I think my it's at nocturnal customs or I think what could it be at nocturnal NZ. Sorry, I don't know exactly. Um, it is on my website though, so go on to nocturnal3d.com and you'll find the Facebook link, and, sorry, the Twitter link, and the Facebook link, and everything else, <laughs> and the email. Alright, thank you for watching, and I will come back and have a new tutorial for you soon.